So you know the thing when you're watching a movie and one of the characters says the name of the movie? Clear and present danger to the United States. Eh, eh, he said it, he said it. That's called a title drop. And it's the same thing in music when you're listening to a song and the artist says the song's name. What's poppin'? Brand new whip, just hopped in. Songs that do this poorly make me roll my eyes and or cringe, and songs that do this well give me chills. And I need to talk about it. I believe they could be organized into neat categories for easier identification. So here's seven made-up terms from a rock on the internet. First of all, everyone knows about the classic repeat. You know, when the title is dropped in the chorus. Baby, you're a and then it's repeated in the chorus. And then the chorus repeats a few times throughout the song. Thank you, Mrs. Perry. This is a normal as hell strategy for making a catchy song. Open Gangnam Star, Gangnam Star, Gangnam Star, Gangnam Star. Oh. Not enough, you say? You want more saying your song name in your song? Well, then you're looking for the spam repeat. This is where the title of the song actually just is the song. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. And as dumb as it may sound, sometimes it goes hard. <laughs> Now I know there's probably some spam repeat critics in the comments right now who want to push the narrative that it's just a brainless technique. It isn't. It feel like I ain't feeling you all. Feel like removing myself, no feelings involved. I feel for you. I've been in the field for you. It's real for you, right? You see, Kendrick title drops in feel 59 times, but it doesn't get old because it's dynamic and unpredictable. So that's if you go all the way down the repetitive side of the spectrum. Now you go the other direction from the classic repeat and you're moving down the subtle side. Here you got the subtle repeat. The name of the song may still be repeated throughout, but it's not front and center. Shoot a nigga in the dick and make his kiss evaporate. Let it marinate. A lot of times the fact that the song doesn't shove its name right in your face actually makes it hit hard. Look how Girl in Red does a title drop to kick us into the song's chorus, but the title isn't the part that's repeated, so it doesn't feel overdone. <laughs> Then you got the real big dick energy artists that are over here using the creative weave. This is the technique where the title drops are dynamically repeated but not spammed the whole song. Solo that I can see under the skirt of an ant. Solo that I don't get high no more when I try no more, I just go hit. Solo my cup is a rojo, my cholo, my friend. And this is where I'd put I Love You, I Hate You by Little Sims. The song that was recommended to me by a commenter on my last video, which ultimately spawned the idea for this video. And just as they described, the way the title is creatively woven into the song through the sample is exceptional. Maybe because you're in my DNA, that's why. <laughs> I can think of another great song that uses a sample to say its name. And going further down the subtle direction, you get the big one punch. This is what I was talking about in my last video with Sorry Not Sorry. With this technique, there's just one title drop, often at the climax of the song. Your listener might be expecting you to say the name of the song at any second, but for the longest time, you don't. That means that when you finally do, It hits them like a ton of bricks. Okay, and this next one, he technically title drops two times, but because it's in one distinct part of the song, when this moment hits me, it still feels like a big one punch. Heavy is the head that chose to wear the crown. Also, I needed to bring Crown up to defend this great song from the blasphemy that Anthony Fantano said about it. One of the most annoying songs he's ever done. Don't get me wrong, I love Anthony Fantano, but when I heard him say that, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Very similar to the big one punch, but now we're at the peak of subtlety, is the half mention. In this case, the song doesn't say its own name exactly, it says something adjacent to it. I might go You know, you might want to call your song, say, Wesley's Theory and have a title drop at the end, but maybe you don't want to say that exactly, you want to say... But Rog, this is the third Kendrick song on the list, you're okay, I know. What about it? At the end of the subtle side of the spectrum, we have the don't mention it at all. And this one's honestly a huge flex. You know, most songs go for the classic repeat because it helps make the song more memorable and recognizable. It's a good strategy if you're unknown wanting to become known, but to not drop the title at all means you're not using the song title for memorability as much as you're using it as an artistic statement. Some of my favorite songs use this technique, like Redbone.
you're actually choosing not to optimize for marketing and instead optimize for art. And that's really cool to see because unfortunately it's rare. The point is there's plenty of good songs made from all of these techniques. It's all about what story your song is telling and picking the right tool for the job. You know what I'm saying? Which of these techniques is your favorite? And more importantly, what do you think is the best example of a song saying its own name ever? Thanks for coming to my rock talk. Be sure to Whoa, the sub button for more good videos.